Hey ladies, this is Mocha Mommy here bringing you another video. And in this video, I want to give you my thoughts on therapy. I love the fact that so many Black women are considering therapy as part of their level up journey. I really love seeing Black women prioritize their mental health and their overall well being. But one of my reservations is thinking that therapy is the end all and be all, thinking that your life can't begin until you are finished with your therapy. I don't like the idea that we think therapy is gonna be the silver bullet to help us get the lives what we want, whether it be leveling up in our career, um, our family relationships, strengthening boundaries, dealing with trauma, or finding a romantic and social life that we've always wanted. So although I think therapy is important, I don't think it's the end all and be all. Listen to this excerpt from Jordan Peterson's Beyond Reason. And I think you may take something away from it. He was isolated in many other ways in addition to his living situation. He had extremely limited family ties. Both of his daughters had moved out of the country and did not maintain much contact. And he had no other relatives except a father and sister from whom he was estranged. His wife and the mother of his children had passed away years ago. And the sole relationship he endeavored to establish while he saw me over the course of more than a decade and a half terminated tragically when his new partner was killed in an automobile accident. When we began to work together, our conversations were decidedly awkward. He was not accustomed to the subtleties of social interaction, so his behaviors verbal and nonverbal, lacked the dance-like rhythm and harmony that characterized the socially fluent. As a child, he had been thoroughly ignored as well as actively discouraged by both parents. His father, mostly absent, was neglectful and sadistic in his inclinations, while his mother was chronically alcoholic. He had also been consistently tormented and harassed at school and had not chanced upon a teacher in all his years of education who paid him any genuine attention. These experiences left my client with a proclivity toward depression, or at least worsened what might have been a biological tendency in that direction. He was, in consequence, abrupt, irritable, and somewhat volatile if he felt misunderstood or was unexpectedly interrupted during a conversation. Such reactions helped ensure that his targeting by bullies continued into his adult life, particularly in his place of work. I soon noticed, however, that things worked out quite well during our sessions if I kept mostly quiet. He would drop in, weekly or bi-weekly, and talk about what had befallen and preoccupied him during the previous 7 to 14 days. If I maintained silence for the first 50 minutes of our one-hour sessions, listening intently, then we could converse in a relatively normal, reciprocal manner for the remaining 10 minutes. This pattern continued for more than a decade as I learned increasingly to hold my tongue, something that does not come easily to me. As the years passed, however, I noticed that the proportion of time he spent discussing negative issues with me decreased. Our conversation, his monologue really, had always started with what was bothering him and rarely progressed past that. But he worked hard outside our sessions, cultivating friends, attending artistic gatherings and music festivals, resurrecting a long dormant talent, composing songs and playing the guitar. As he became more social, he began to generate solutions to the problems he communicated to me and to discuss in the latter portion of the hours we shared some of the more positive aspects of his existence. It was slow going, but he made continual incremental progress. When he first came to see me, we could not sit together at a table in a coffee shop or indeed in any public space and practice anything resembling a real-world conversation without his being paralyzed into absolute silence. By the time we finished, he was reading his original poetry in front of small groups and had even tried his hand at stand-up comedy. He was the best personal and practical exemplar of something I had come to realize over my more than 20 years of psychological practice. People depend on constant communication with others to keep their minds organized. We all need to think to keep things straight, but we mostly think by talking. 
We need to talk about the past so that we can distinguish the trivial, overblown concerns that otherwise plague our thoughts from the experiences that are truly important. We need to talk about the nature of the present and our plans for the future so we know where we are, where we are going, and why we are going there. We must submit the strategies and tactics we formulate to the judgments of others to ensure their efficiency and resilience. We need to listen to ourselves as we talk as well so that we may organize our otherwise inchoate bodily reactions, motivations and emotions into something articulate and organized and dispense with those concerns that are exaggerated and irrational. We need to talk, both to remember and to forget. My client desperately needed someone to listen to him. He also needed to be fully part of additional, larger and more complex social groups, something he planned in our sessions together and then carried out on his own. Had he fallen prey to the temptation to denigrate the value of interpersonal interactions and relationships because of his history of isolation and harsh treatment, he would have had very little chance of regaining his health and well-being. Instead, he learned the ropes and joined the world. While I do think therapy is important and a very much needed step that needs to happen for Black women, I also think that so is our relationships with our family. We need to go to therapy with an intention of healing the past and creating a much better outlook for our future. I think that therapy is an integral part of our level up journey, but so is more reading. So is an exercise program. So is making friends and taking that art class or being part of that creative collective, no matter what it looks like. So is going on dates and just initiating conversation. So is reconnecting with old friends and kindling some new friendships and relationships. Therapy is important, but it's not everything. So if you're finding yourself in a holding pattern because you feel you need to find the perfect therapist and get at some point to quote unquote arrive before you start showing up to your own life, I would really like to implore you ladies to get out there because therapy is one major piece to an incredibly beautiful puzzle that is you. This is Mocha Mommy, and I'll see you in the next video.